Successful Minds with Patricia Barnowski Schneider, the show that takes you around the world to share interviews with some of the most successful and relevant people on the planet. Hear their stories and get the most important business lessons they have learned on their road to success and get exclusive advice on how to implement their success into your life and business. Successful Minds with Patricia Barnowski Schneider is brought to you by the Strategic Advisor Board and your host, Patricia Barnowski Schneider. Hello and welcome back to Successful Minds. I'm your host, Patty Baranowski Schneider, CEO of Christine Advisors. Today I'm joined by my guest, Alex Lebarski. He's the CEO of Science of Human Optimization Inc. Our topic today focuses on unaging, structures for a more proactive and personalized system of cause focused care. So before we jump in, a little bit about Alex. Alex was born in the USSR. He's the founder of Science of Human Optimization Inc. and author of The Art of Selling, The Art of Healing how the rebels of today are creating the healthcare of tomorrow and why your life depends on it. So thank you for joining us today, Alex. Mm-hmm. Good to be with you, Patricia. So why don't you give us a quick rundown of what people can learn from Science of Human Optimization, Inc. Well, I think the first place to start is that uh, we can do much better with our own individual health, well-being, longevity by creating the proper infrastructure for um, uh, long life long, happy, you know, healthy life, uh, because the current model of healthcare is not supportive of that. So hopefully we can discuss that in more detail. Sure. <clears throat> so seeing how you're involved with the science of human optimization world, tell us a little bit about your process, like what intrigues you, what you look for, how you navigate the process. So to take you a little bit back, I, um, I've been in healthcare for about 25 years. And uh, originally, I got involved because um, it was just a business opportunity where uh, we would put uh, uh, doctors into medical offices around New York, and we would build insurance companies and uh, uh, pay the doctors. So it was, a, it was a very profitable business, but I felt like we weren't really helping anybody. We were just moving paper around. Everybody was making money. Everybody was happy. But I, I didn't feel like we were making much of a difference. It's just a big bureaucracy. Mm-hmm. So not much later after that, I was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis. And um, that's a pretty devastating diagnosis when you're in your early 30s. So I could barely get myself out of a chair. My hips hurt so bad, I could barely walk. Uh, My fingers, my wrists began to hurt. And then I was uh, started developing these uh, lesions all over. I started on my head, but then it went to 60% of my body. In fact, one of the doctors uh, I went to, a dermatologist, told me he's never seen a case as severe as mine. So I'm quite uh, the overachiever. <laughs> and um, so I went to a bunch of doctors with my insurance card, and they all pretty much told me the same thing. It, it didn't really matter if I went to one doctor or 20. It was the same doctor over and over again because they had the same philosophy, the same education, the same mindset, the same business model. You know, you have a... Symptom, here's the medication to suppress it. So mm-hmm. steroid creams, uh, pain medication, and uh, they wanted to put me on uh, these uh, chemo-like drugs. But anyway, so it didn't make any logic to me that um, I only spent three minutes with the doctor. He didn't know anything about me at all. And there was no way he was going to help me get to the root cause of the issue. So mm-hmm. that's where I began my search. Yeah, I know we spoke about this once before, and unfortunately, it just seems that the healthcare is, one, it's in the pharmaceuticals wallet, and they don't normally get to the root of a problem, because I mentioned the last time how I used to suffer from migraines for years and was put on every medication under the sun. They don't figure out why you have them. It's just basically you have migraines, here, some pills. And through many years, I was on every pill under the sun and eventually was even taking injections for them. And then when I had an accident, I used to take a lot of vitamins and stuff. You know, as you get to a certain age, you you should take A, B, C, D, E. So I was taking all of these vitamins, none of which are bad for you. But apparently mixing them together in my body obviously was rejecting it because I didn't need it. And I had an accident and never got, um, I was kind of out for like a month, obviously not taking any of these vitamins. And um, I remember my husband saying that when I was in the hospital, it's almost like I went through detox. He's like, we had to put ice blankets on you, but we didn't, you weren't running a few, we didn't know what was going on and never got a migraine again. So had the doctors taken the time to figure out what was causing these, 
that could have avoided a lot, but how many people suffer from these? And again, like you say, you just go to a doctor and they're just giving you pills. It's the world we live in. Well, that's the, um, that's the structure of the model. You know, it's more like triage medicine. So mm -hmm. they're in the battlefield, they would have these white tents, you know, mm -hmm. and then they would have the doctors, you know, you, you got shot in your arm, so they sew off your arm uh, and then hopefully send you back. Uh, to fight. So that, that's that's what our current healthcare model is based on. Uh, you know, they patch you up as quickly as and expensively as possible, and then send you back to work. But um, you know, worse than that is uh, it's our, the system has become so politicized that um, you know the money that we pay into our health insurance. You would think, like you you put money into your bank account that when you need it, it's there for you. Mm -hmm. But it's not that way, because whether you're paying money into your health insurance or you're paying money into Medicare and Medicaid or whatever, you know, you're paying taxes, uh, the politicization process begins with people hollering from the bottom at the politicians that they want uh, free health care, they want access to this particular therapy, this particular treatment. And the politicians, they don't really care. It's not their money. Mm -hmm. So they just want your vote. So basically what you're doing is you're purchasing your uh, politicians' vote. Uh, they're purchasing your vote with these things that they give you they couldn't care less about. Right. So the system becomes diluted. Uh, so, you know, you you want, uh, you have a migraine, you want to go to a doctor who's going to spend some time and figure out that, uh, you know, the soup that you're eating or the vitamins that you're taking is uh, actually the cause of this. Right. But nobody's interested in that. Right. Um, they just want to do the simplest, least expensive thing they can possibly do is spend as little time doing it as they can. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. So now we have a system that's uh, uh, becoming very expensive. You know, we're at 4.1 trillion today. It's doubling geometrically. Mm -hmm. uh, and the problem is that the more money we put into the system, the more disease it demands for it to continue to grow and expand. And, and there's something called elastic demand. So it's like, you know, if you pour a, a bucket of uh, $100 bills on Times Square someplace, uh, it's not going to take a long time for it to disappear. So you got to keep pouring. Right. And the more you pour, the quicker it disappears because the word of mouth it grows now. Because right. everybody knows there are piles of money on Times Square. <laughs> and so, um, and that, that's what happens. You know, there's this elastic demand in healthcare. And you're giving away all of this free stuff, and the more free stuff you give away, the more free stuff people demand. So now we have this entitlement mentality in this country. Right. So we think that uh, somebody else owes us health care. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think maybe you have right to water, but you don't have rights to the waiter. Right. And that's what people think. You have right to your health, but you don't have right to health care or basically the services and the experience and the education of another human being so we've crossed these lines someplace and now all you hear from the politicians is you know uh, free health care socialized health care uh, medicaid for all health care anything health care except you working directly with your doctor health care that's too simple and that's too unprofitable for all the bureaucrats that want to be in between you and your doctor right yeah, you're right. I mean, unfortunately, that seems to be the world we're living in. <laughs> Nobody wants to work. They just want everything for free, and that's just the way it is. And I'm hoping that this is changing. Well, I, I don't want. To, I don't. I don't want to work. I want everything for free. But I just know that's, that's not yeah. a system that's that's, that's workable. You know? If everybody had that mentality, where are we going to be next year? You know. <laughs> well, you know, worse than worse than that, I think uh, uh, it's not really about uh, working for working's sake. You know. Uh, you pay your bills, you kind of cover your expenses, that's one thing. Right. But I think what's uh, truly valuable in um, in work is that it allows you to kind of evolve and become a different kind of person, the kind of person you may envision yourself becoming. Right. Uh, rather than, you know, when, when people are, when they don't have anything to do, when they don't have anything to look forward to, it kills the spirit and destroys the mind because like any other body part, any other muscle, if you're not working it out, it atrophies. So people that aren't pursuing something, they're not thinking, they're not struggling, they're not trying to build something. Uh, so it's not just about uh, creating a successful business and making lots of money. It's actually becoming the kind of human being that you're uh, potentially designed to become.
So, you know, work is so much more than just the... No, it is true. You definitely have to, uh, you know, you definitely have to keep moving. I, I remember my grandmother, you know, she years and I mean, she's not here anymore, but years ago, she every morning would do the crossword puzzle and interact with other people. Um, you know, back then they had the senior centers where you'd go do that. But through the year, she stopped going to that and stopped doing the crossword puzzles. And just like that, she just went downhill and just, you know, dementia, lost her mind. And But yeah, you use it or lose it. You don't interact with people. You don't use your brain. It's going to atrophy, like you say. Tell me what's one tool that you carry in your toolbox, no matter what project you're working on. Like you mentioned, you know, a love for people. So like, what, what is it that motivates you to do what you do every day? Uh, well, what motivates me, I, I, I've always been very motivated. You know, I, whatever project I got myself involved in, I, I put my heart and soul. I, I don't, I've never worked uh, mm-hmm. nine to five. I don't even know what that looks like. <laughs> you know, I, I work like all the time. If I'm not actually doing something, I'm, thinking, I'm uh, trying to tap my creativity, I'm trying to write something, I'm trying to speak with somebody, I'm trying to, I'm always trying to do something, so right. I don't know, how, I don't know how people can like work 9 to 5 and then shut themselves off <laughs> at yeah. 5, I, I just, I don't know how to do that, it's not my, <laughs> it's not my, not my strength, Yeah. so I, um, I have a passion for this because I know that um, having a chronic illness, right. like, like psoriatic arthritis, for example, or mm-hmm. some of the other ones that people are dealing with out there. Right. It can be so life destroying that um, it's a travesty. And I see, I see these young people that are dealing with all these chronic illnesses, uh, obesity, for example, or like uh, um, if they have some skin condition on their face, right. you know, it's a travesty. And no matter how many dermatologists they're going to go to, no matter how many doctors they're going to visit, nobody's going to tell them what actually to do to resolve the problem permanently. And so the, these, all these practitioners are looking for, uh, you know, they're looking for complicated solutions to simple problems. Well, what I want to, what I want us to focus on is simple solutions to complicated problems. So, I mean, if you, if you, if you can take, uh, if, let's say, for example, um, if you have, uh, salt water in the morning, warm salt water, and that helps, uh, you know, clean your digestion from some kind of a parasite or, uh, help clean out your liver or something like that. I mean, that's a, a simple solution as it can get. But, and I'm not saying that that's what you should be doing. I'm saying, you know, let's, uh, for example, uh, when you go to the doctor, they're never going to offer you a simple solution to a complicated problem. Right. They try to complicate, they're like, okay, um, well, you need a clearly a liver transplant. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's almost a $150,000 to do a liver transplant. So, um, we're not going to do the salt. We're not going to do the uh, lemon flush. We're not going to do any supplements that might do it. No, we're going to get down to business and uh, give you a brand new liver. So, that's how a little bit the way the system is set up. And that's, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of these kinds of perverse incentives that are in the system that undermines uh, our ability for optimal function and longevity. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, I know you're like heavily involved. With, um, I know you were doing some get togethers with some doctors where they could give, you know, advice and you do webinars where people can listen for free and learn about, you know, it's not a money making scam for you. It's more about how can we help everybody be better at the easiest and beneficial way for you. Because um, as you said, you can go to five different doctors and they're going to put you on every medicine under the sun, which, you know, could be even though you're you might only pay. Ten dollars with your copay, your insurance is getting billed four thousand dollars for this, and it's probably not even something you need, you know. So, what are you most excited about right now? Well, you know, we were doing uh, conferences up until uh, COVID, right. and um, I, I love doing conferences. Right. Uh, that was just definitely my my kind of thing. We would organize uh, thousands of people. We'd have, uh, you know, 150 exhibiting companies. We'd have 80 physicians flying from around the country that spoke at this event. We've had Suzanne Summers. We had some of the really amazing physicians that um, uh, are in the country that are actually looking to resolve chronic illnesses at the root. And so <clears throat> after this whole COVID nonsense and the lockdowns that we had to endure, um, I couldn't do my conferences anymore. And basically... I was at a point where I, I I didn't think that that's what I wanted to do 
um, moving forward because um, I I felt like you know a lot of the doctors that we would present to the public they were brilliant and wonderful and amazing, but most physicians are not business people at all. They're not salespeople. Uh, they're not um, they're, they're physicians, <laughs> and you know in one lifetime to become a physician. That's a lot to ask for one human being. And then to tell them, okay, now you're a physician, now you become a salesperson, <laughs> a business person, and a marketing right. expert. That's ridiculous. Yeah. A handful of people had this remarkable ability. But for the most part, that's just not the case. So I wanted to actually get uh, uh, design a system where I'm working with these doctors in, in tandem. They do the doctoring, and we do the marketing and the selling and the education and creating the systems that actually <clears throat> people would want to get involved with. Right. So once we pass along a, a client or a potential client to uh, one of our professionals, you know, they just do their thing and we do our thing. Mm -hmm. So that's a very synergetic relationship. So what I'm excited about is that over the last two years, I've been kind of building this foundation of how to how do we reach the public, how do we get in front of people, how do we attract uh, you know, open-minded people to our message because, I mean, the, uh, the, the healthcare industry spends $60 billion a year out of the $4 trillion that they spend on whatever other things. But $60 billion is reserved for the propaganda campaign. <laughs> so people think they think the way they think is because that's how they think. Right. But that's not, that's not, uh, you know, it's not without Hours and hours of television advertising, of billboards, and everything you touch, a pen or a, a, a pad that you write on with some logo on it. There's always you being bombarded with information, or I should say misinformation, about what you actually need to live a healthy, happy, successful life. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of this propaganda, there's a lot of this misinformation, and we need to help people uh, circumvent all of that and really provide them with specific things that they as individuals require to right. function optimally for the duration of their long life. Right. So that's what I'm excited about. Like we took two years to finally get here to the point where we have all the structures in place. This is a, a prototype of a journal that okay. I created. This is the second one mm -hmm. uh, that Dr. Kelly O'Malley Matone. Okay. She'll be speaking at a, a dinner talk with those. So I'm going to be doing uh, dinner talks every other month. Okay. And I'm going to be bringing in, like, as my resources and uh, abilities grow, we're going to be bringing in, like, uh, famous models, uh, famous authors, famous actors, everybody who's into health, wellness, longevity, human optimization. Like Cameron Diaz, for example, you know, she, she left acting a while back. Right. Uh, and she wrote a book on longevity. Um, uh, there's a few other really famous actresses that are really into living healthier, longer lives. So I think if we can start selling this message to the public, right. uh, even though we're fighting a $60 billion uh, propaganda campaign, right. people are very intelligent, you know. Once they see something that makes logic, uh, it just cuts through the, the nonsense very, very quickly. Right. No, it is true. I know, like, like I said, I was taking all of these vitamins and all of that. I mean, I literally had like a, a, this much of stuff I took every day. And obviously, I didn't need that. So I know um, you were advocating at one point, there's like blood tests that you could take where that will tell you, you don't need out of the 20 things you were taking, you only need two. And here's why. And maybe it's different for everybody else. But one, it's saving you money. But it's also saving the wear and tear that this is doing on your body that you didn't need in the first place. So, you know, if people only knew that. Well, so the, the, the structure that we're creating is uh, unique in, in the world and the marketplace. There's a couple of companies that are doing something that may seem similar, but it really isn't. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had access to some of the brilliant minds uh, in, in the uh, functional medicine space for, for many, many years now, uh, like uh, Mark Hyman, um, Dr. Oz, you know, like uh, Suzanne Summers back in the day was... Uh, Jack LaLanne, do you remember Jack LaLanne? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I actually interviewed him on a radio show, and uh, about two minutes into the interview, he started interviewing me. <laughs> <laughs> it was very, very, very special. Man, I, I actually contracted to bring him out to New York nice. uh, to speak at one of our events, so they sent me the contract. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. And uh, <laughs> the next day they canceled it because he fell injured. It was 96 at the time. Wow. Maybe four, <laughs> maybe. Uh, so, so we have access to all these remarkable people that are truly so passionate about keeping people healthy and well for the duration of their life. Right. Um, but the problem is, like, how do you structure all this information and make it available to people in a consistent basis that correlates with their own individual um, genetic makeup? Right. So we take about 12 months to get to know our client. Mm -hmm. We do their blood. We do their genetics. We do their digestion. Like, we test the, the, the biome and the digestion. Mm -hmm. uh, we test for any heavy metals or parasites or anything that might be interfering with optimal function. Right. Uh, so we take we do all that, and after, after as we go through this time, we make little tiny adjustments. So if your vitamin D was low, we want to focus on your vitamin D and getting it optimized. If you were toxic with uh, mercury, we want to check your uh, oral cavity, make sure you have uh, amalgam fillings. If you do, we'll send you to one of our biomimetic dentists. They'll remove all that. And then we're going to chelate it from your body because if you're if you're if you have uh, heavy metals in your in your body, which most people do to some extent, uh, especially if you have amalgam fillings or you eat lots of sushi or you're in some industrial environment where you have access to it, or you drink regular unfiltered tap water. So most of us have uh, heavy metals in our system. Uh, mercury, aluminum, all of these things are neurological toxins. So why is Alzheimer's as high as it is? Why is uh, Parkinson's as popular as it is? Because nobody talks to you about heavy metal toxicity. And once you develop Parkinson's or you develop early stages of Alzheimer's, they put you on medications and uh, they try to manage that disease like that. But that disease should have been addressed 10 years before it happened. You know, so that's what it is. Yeah, I mean, these are valuable stuff that normal everyday people, I wouldn't, you, I wouldn't know this, you know, nobody's telling me that. Well, I didn't know it either. Yeah. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't care about it if I didn't get, if I was, if I didn't happen to be in healthcare, right. if I didn't happen to be diagnosed with, with a life altering condition that destroyed my life, right. you know, and I can see how people can become suicidal, uh, dealing with, with conditions like this, right. where you keep going, you, you know, you, you, it, it alters your ability to do the things you love. You can go to the beach and take off your clothes. You know, if you want to make love to somebody, uh, you, you can't do that. It's just like, well, yeah. you can't eat anything. Like anything you eat, you're like super sensitive to it. Right. If, if uh, we travel somewhere, my wife and I, uh, and we go to um, some exotic country, have some exotic food, like my my skin would turn into leather. Like I couldn't yeah. move if I if I... If I it become so taut, like if I move my arm and rips and starts bleeding through my clothes. Wow. So like, what kind of life is that? Yeah. And you go from doctor to doctor to doctor and they tell you, well, there's no cure. There's no hope. Here's a medication. It's going to destroy your liver. It's going to kill your brain. It's going to uh, rip holes into your, in your digestive system. But enjoy it. It'll shut off your immune system for a little bit. And, uh, you know, you'll have clear skin for a couple of years. But then you're going to have your doctor, your, your friends visit you in hospice. And they're going to be all confused. He was so healthy. He was. He ate well. He exercised. Like, what happened? <laughs> it would be so embarrassing, don't you think? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> wow. Um, okay, so what has fundamentally changed about your work from when you started until now? Well, uh, it has been a tremendous evolution over the last, uh, you know, 25 years of the stuff I learned. Like when, when I was first diagnosed, when I first started developing psoriasis, it was a little patch of skin right here, about my right ear. <clears throat> and, um, you know, uh, I, I, st I was putting butter on it, you know. Um, I, I went to the doctor and they gave me creams, steroid creams. I put steroid creams on it. So when it went away, I thought it was, that's it, I'm cured. But, you know, when you're, if you have a hole, a pinhole in your hose, in the water hose, uh, and you put your finger on it, if there are weaknesses in this hose, the pressure is going to find an exit someplace else. Mm -hmm. So you put your finger here, it pops up here. You put your finger there, it pops up over here. So it's going to keep doing that. So unless you address the underlying cause, uh, the problem is going to get progressively worse. And that's what's, what happens. 
people start developing early symptoms. It could be like very innocuous, very simple things. You know, you have a little skin blemish that doesn't go away. You have a little pain that keeps nudging at you. You, uh, you're not sleeping well. Like there's very slight symptoms. These, these are the symptoms where your early stage chronic problem is beginning to develop. <clears throat> so you go to the doctor, you know, you don't know any better. You trust them. Uh, you think that they're going to help you address the underlying cause and resolve it, but they're not interested in that. So they, they lead you along for a decade or two or three. Uh, and then eventually it explodes into some kind of a really life destroying chronic, uh, problem that becomes a health catastrophe. But it didn't become a health catastrophe today. It's been evolving over the last 30 years because you've been misguided, misinformed, abused. <laughs> and so, so that's why I love this. And that's why I think it's important. I dedicated my life to, uh, making a difference for people. Um, so it went through many evolutions. You know, we started with, uh, I, I, when I was first started doing this, um, I was promoting uh, organic uh, things. And at the time, people were like, organic? You know, it grows out of like manure. Why would you want organic when you can have, you know, quality food from build, you know, grew, grown from chemicals, right. sprayed with the most, uh, you know, it's top companies that manufacture these uh, um, poisons, yeah. uh, like, <laughs> like, uh, Round, Roundup and all of these other things. Why, like, why would you want to, why would you want to eat tomatoes that grew out of poop? That seems disgusting. But now yeah. everybody, everybody eats organic, of course, anywhere you go, uh, regular supermarket or, you know, Whole Foods or Trader Joe's, everything's organic. Now, ev now olive oil is organic. Uh, anything you touch, it's organic, organic, organic. But before, like 15 years ago, 20 years ago, um, you know, People, people didn't like organic. <laughs> so. You know, it's kind of crazy when you like. My, I know somebody. They eat this. Um, it's kind of like chicken in a can, sort of. They're almost like um, tuna fish, but it's chicken, um, and that has like a five-year lifespan in your cabinet. What chicken lives for five years? I mean, I don't even want to know what it is you're eating. And same with buying like natural food. If you go to um, a supermarket and you get stuff and it's been imported from another country, sprayed or whatever. It, by the time I get it out of the supermarket, Lord knows when it was even picked, but you only get like two, three days and it's already bad. And I remember going someplace once and we picked fresh, fresh food and that lasted about a month. And I was like, wow, because this is natural. There's nothing in there, no pesticides, no nothing. You know, and then when you think about all that other stuff you're eating, this is all stuff in your body. You know, we have, like you say, you have no idea what this thing is festering for how many years. And, you know, we weren't meant to, you know, ingest all of this stuff. So it's good to know. But again, like you say, nobody's explaining this to the average Joe. So how would we know, you know, until yeah. it happens to you? Yeah. And like well, I said, it, it, and that's, that's the thing. You know, when it happens to you, uh, you're usually under the um, uh, powers of this bureaucracy. Like I have a cousin of mine. Uh, he, he was in his mid He still is. Uh, he's in his mid fifties and uh, he was diagnosed with a, uh, enlarged prostate so they did a biopsy and uh, they said that there was a cancer there next week they had him in for an operation to remove the prostate i mean that is so barbaric prostate like from what i've learned it, it's a very slow moving cancer it could take decades to evolve and there are so many other ways to address it before you start cutting out the prostate mm -hmm. uh, it's a very sensitive area as you know and uh it may uh complications may evolve, let's say. And so before you do that, you should like, consider, but they frighten him so much. Like I spoke with him like the Friday before his operation on Monday. I told him, before you do that, why don't you go see like radiologists if you want to, like, like some of the supplements are available, some of the foods, some of the, you know, get rid of some of the things from your diet. Let's, yeah. let's, let's take a little time with this. You have time. No, no, no. Monday I'm going in, I'm removing everything. Like, like, now, which blows my mind, like, you know, Angelina Jolie, I mean, this is going right. different. Yeah, direction. I remember, yeah. She, she has some kind of a gene that said that she was predisposed to breast cancer. So she goes and removes her breasts and uh, over, I don't want to, she removes, like, everything. This is so barbaric. Oh, my God. Like, um, it's <laughs> For something that may or may not ever happen. Well, right. So <laughs> you, you have uh, your genetics, but then you have the terrain. The things that you do on a daily basis that either activate your genetics or keep them dormant. So 
it's in your hands and your ability to kind of uh, be the uh, orchestrator of your life. So just because, so I have this uh, friend of mine, and uh, I'm 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 a big uh, I'm a big vitamin D uh, questioner. So everybody <laughs> get together and we start these conversations. And do you know your vitamin D level? Most people, of course, have no idea. Right. So, and if they do know on the off chance, usually it's like, well, it's in my, it's in, it's 21. Uh, but my doctor said it's okay. I said, seriously? Okay. Uh, you know, if your vitamin D is under 20 nanograms per milliliter, you have a, a higher chance of developing osteomalacia, which is weakening of the bones. You also have a 75% chance of developing colon cancer, which I find a very interesting statistic. Right. Uh, 75%, that's a lot of percentages. Right. Yeah, I didn't know this, yeah. <laughs> so I was sitting with my friend, and um, I asked her, I said, do you know your vitamin D level? Oh, yeah, I do. I know my vitamin D level. I went to my doctor. He said, it was very impressed. It was four. I said, your vitamin D was uh, four? I never even heard of such a low <laughs> level before. Yeah, four. And my vitamin D was four. I said, you know, there's a 75% chance of developing colon cancer if your vitamin D is under 20 nanograms per milliliter. She goes, you know, I didn't know that. But worse than that, uh, my sister uh, died from colon cancer. My aunt died from colon cancer. Like she has all these people in her life that died from colon cancer, and her vitamin D is four, and nobody's addressing it. So even if it's not true, even if the science is off, vitamin D is like a twenty dollar supplement. <laughs> you know, right? Just for fun, get your vitamin D to where it doesn't cause. Uh, uh, colon cancer and all the other problems that it's it's uh, it's been shown to to cause if it's depleted. Yeah, especially if it's in the family. <laughs> so, so the, the, what I'm saying is that like uh, this colon cancer that killed off her family wasn't the genetics necessarily. Yeah. Right. It was a lack of vitamin D that activated the genetics that caused the cancer. So, if you if, the, the reason I would do genetics, like I did my genetics, right. uh, the reason I would do it is because I want to understand what I am potentially predisposed to. So right. let's say, for example, um, I'm predisposed to, um, let's say, let's say cancer of some kind. I want to know how do I alter my lifestyle, my nutritional habits, uh, supplementation, stress levels, exercise regimen, to make sure that I do everything possible to make sure that those genetics remain dormant. Right. And so, for that reason, I would want to know my genetics, but not remove, to remove my breasts and ovaries and my leg, like, stop, <laughs> this, is, this is ridiculous. It makes no logic. Right. But, so, if, if your insurance company is paying for it, right, you go to the doctor, you're like, okay, I want to have my breasts removed, I want to have my ovaries removed. Um, doctor looks up on the chart, that's like, you know, $75,000. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I guess tell us a little bit more. So your um, your company. So you, people would go through you and basically have a discussion on, you know, they need to, they want to see a doctor, they want to get evaluated. Like if they heard this and said, okay, I want, I want to take the next step. Like, have, I guess, tell me the procedure. Well, I want to explain the philosophy a little bit because it is just so different and it blows people's minds because. Usually, we we'll go to a doctor when we have a problem, right? Right. If you develop some kind of a chronic illness, you go to a regular allopathic doctor with your health insurance. They'll see you for three minutes and prescribe a medication. Or if you have some money, you'll go to a functional medicine doctor who's going to see you for an hour and a half uh, for the initial consultation. Then they'll do a follow up, order some supplements, do some testing. And so uh, they're going to look to cure the problem, hopefully, at the root, hopefully. If that's they're truly functional medicine done. Now everybody's wellness, everybody's functional medicine, whether they know what it is or not, <laughs> but um, they, everybody's now jumping on this bandwagon because the insurance companies aren't paying anything. So that's how the system works. But, you know, you're going to see these doctors once you already have a problem that's been evolving, like we said, for many years and sometimes decades. It becomes very expensive to try to address it in, in that one hour, hour and a half. How much more logic does it make if you have an ongoing relationship with somebody that you check in with on a regular basis. So, you know, we spend a year getting to know you, getting to know your genetics, getting to know your blood, getting to know your 
nutritional habits, getting to know a lot of things about you that we feel important to get a whole picture. Mm-hmm. And then uh, we look to optimize all of these things on a regular, ongoing basis. So you check in with us uh, every quarter, and we test those things that we know about you. So if, we, if like with me, for example, I, I have a gene called MTHFR. And that gene makes it difficult for my body to detoxify. So if I'm not diligent about it, if I don't do sauna, if I don't sweat, if I don't uh, take certain supplements, then I tend to accumulate toxicity in my body, which ultimately causes damage to whatever. I want on a regular basis every quarter, you know, I'm 54 now. Um, every quarter, I want to test those things I know about myself to make sure that they're where I want them to be. So I, I, my vitamin D level, if I don't if I don't keep an eye on it, it drops. Like if I don't pay attention to it, it drops below twenty. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. I could be supplementing, just something interferes with it. So I want to make sure that I'm very diligent about that. And so there are some very simple things that can be done inexpensively on a regular, ongoing basis that prevents you from like you know if you don't change the oil in your car ever, right. and then one day you're driving on a long trip and the engine explodes, um, then it's like it's like these two paradigms. If we changed your oil on a regular basis, make sure before your trip you had enough oil in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, rather than waiting until the engine explodes, when it does, you got to call the fire trucks and you got to call <laughs> the emergency crews, and then you got to have the car towed. And then you're at the mercy of the system. Hopefully, you're in an honest repair shop, but you don't know. <laughs> like all of these things. Yeah. Yeah, so basically the first step would be is contact you and set up the like introduction introductory well, well, appointment. So um the way we're structuring this is you would need to attend one of our events. Mm-hmm. Like you really have to get what we're offering. About, yeah. And then it's it's it has to go both ways. Like you're checking us out, are they honest? Are they giving us a whole bunch of nonsense? Do they, they just yeah. want me for my money? Right. Uh, who are these people? But yeah, fine. So that's fine. So hopefully we'll prove to you that we're on the level. But we also know, know we want to know you. We want to make sure that you're not a flake. <laughs> we want to make sure you're committed to your own health and well-being. Right. We want to make sure we're not going to drag you all the time to to do the things necessary for you to stay healthy, well, and live a long, prosperous life. Right. Uh, like we want to be your partner in this process. Right. We don't want to be your dictator or boss or you know your guru. Right. We're not interested in any of that. Right. It's a very friendly partnership. Like you, when I introduce you to one, one of my nurse practitioners, you're going to love them. There's no question about that. Whether they're going to like you, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know you. I'm sure right. they will. Right. All right. So that's a good good step, I guess. So they have to attend the event. Right. Uh, then there's a process. They fill out a 12 question assessment form. Then we we uh, introduce them to our practitioner. So the practitioner they they review it. They get together with you. There's no money exchanges mm-hmm. up until this point. They'll spend an hour with you, kind of getting to know you, uh, asking you questions, hopefully help, help you guide you on some ideas. Um, and after that, if we both decide we can work together, because this is going to be at least a year, and hopefully for the rest of your life, right. that we're going to do this. Um, so we, it's like a marriage, really. I mean, we, we have to make sure that we're compatible, we like each other, and we can... Uh, like, you know your stuff, we know our stuff, and we can kind of tap all this cutting-edge medicine and cutting-edge technology and science and use that to optimize you in such a way that you become a unique creation on this planet. That is, like, there are people that live to be a hundred, you know, Jean-Louis Carmen, this woman, lived to be 122, 122. In France, and she smoked until she was 117. And she drank alcohol. <laughs> Wonderful, like my type of lady. <laughs> so, th- there are certain things that these people have by accident or purpose or genetic that make them live healthy, happy, long lives. Mm-hmm. And like one of them, uh, for example, is this bug in the digestive system uh, called Ackermansia. It tends to be very popular with people who are over 105. Mm. who live to be over 105. They tend to have it in abundance. Most of the population, myself included, when I tested myself, I had no acromensia. There are like six or seven or eight bugs that are in your digestive system that um, when they're in there, it digests the food, it absorbs the nutrition, keeps the keeps the gut lining sealed tight, 
So you're not leaking this uh, this uh, food and and refuse into your bloodstream, you know, like that. So there are things we can learn if we actually refocus from the management of disease to longevity on what it takes for the human body to function optimally for the duration of its days. And, you know, I don't particularly care to live to be 120. I wouldn't mind. I don't think so. I'd be a very cool 120-year-old dude. <laughs> like, what well, if if God allows me and the science and technology catches up here uh, and I'm 120, I'm going to dress like I'm going to wear cool hats, I'll have bow ties. I'll be one sexy 120-year-old dude. I'll be on the cover next. <laughs> I'll put myself on my own cover. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, that is perfect. All right. So what's one big takeaway you want listeners to get from this episode? Uh, my big takeaway is this. Um, you know, we are living on a really uh, incredible planet, a w- wonderful, miraculous world. It's truly, it's truly miraculous. Like, if you did any traveling, even in the United States, or if you went around the world a little bit, you see how beautiful this planet is. Like, you, you look at the ma- mountains, and some of the mountains, you know, snow-covered, and you say, wow, this is just majesty. This is so gorgeous. Or you look at the ocean, you just say, this is power, especially when you see those waves and the surfers and all that. This is power. You look at a beautiful field of flowers, and you're like, you know, this is just magnificent. Look how beautiful this is. But then you look in the mirror, and you're like, you know, yeah. so, so, <laughs> so imperfect. It's like, yeah. you fail, so you're a failure. You, you, you don't look as good as you did when you were 20, so you're ugly. Like, we're very mean to ourselves. Yeah. But what I, what my, my message is, is that you are much more majestic than any mountain, much more powerful than any ocean. And your beauty as a human being is so much more prevalent than any of the most beautiful fields of flowers on this planet. Yeah. So take care of yourself, love yourself, enjoy life, and hopefully you can do it for a long, long, wonderful time. And in 20 years. <laughs> At least. Yeah. So how can listeners connect? Um, you can go to showinc.com, S-C-H-O-I-N-C.com. That's our website. Okay. I'm going to put your contact stuff on the end of this uh, video yeah. anyway. Um, there's my email or Facebook, LinkedIn. I'm, I'm, I'm everywhere. Okay. You, you can find me if you, if you need me. Okay. I'll post that on there. And Patricia, I just want to say that you are wonderful. You and I connected a couple of years ago now. Thank you. Um, I know. I love listening to this. I've been on some of the webinars. And actually, my mother-in-law um, is living with us now, um, 83. And I have her listen to this stuff too, because I'm like, you know, it is true. It's, you know, and like you, I learned from, you know, I learned on my own because like I said, I was just popping pills because that's what they said. And until yeah, but, it happens, like, right. I don't know. But the, the advice is so genetic. Like you read a, you read a health food book, a health book. Uh, it's, it's all very generic. Like, okay, you take vitamin C, take vitamin D. What kind of vitamin D? What kind of, what kind of vitamin C? Yeah. Uh, eat this, don't eat that. But uh, maybe my genetics want that and not this. Like so, it's it's so I was doing all of these things. I tried so many different programs, so many different supplements. But you really have to have somebody that is your is an expert in you. So thanks again for being on the show. Again, that was Alex Labarsky, CEO of Science of Human Optimization Inc. Thanks for listening to Success My Minds with Patty B. Never miss an episode by subscribing to the show. I'll provide the links after. But you can also listen via Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever it is you listen to your podcast. So thanks again. Thank you, Patricia. It was a pleasure. Mm-hmm. Thank you for listening to Successful Minds with your host, Patricia Barnowski-Schneider. Please leave your feedback and visit strategicadvisorboard.com to get the latest and greatest business advisement on the planet. Follow us on social media for updates, and we'll see you on the next episode.